The 2015 Nobel Prize in Medicine has been awarded to scientists who developed new drugs for infections caused by roundworm parasites and malaria. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for parasites to get a little more respect. <laughs> We're not alone in this world. The majority of creatures living around and inside us are invisible. Many of them make our very existence possible, while some can put an end to it. Some people are terrified of them, while others carelessly believe it's the scourge of only exotic countries. However, they're much closer to us than we think. Perhaps by making us a home to billions of microscopic organisms, Nature controls life expectancy of all creatures on Earth and only allows the survival of the fittest. Can this fear of microorganisms be overcome by learning more about them? How important is cleanliness to our health and where's the line between sensible cleanliness and obsession? How can we coexist with what we can't see without falling prey to it? If I could only see all those creatures that are invisible due to their size or natural habitat, all those who live and benefit at the expense of others and cause harm are called parasites. They may represent different classes and families and may differ in size. They are insects, the fungi, helminths, protozoa, bacteria, viruses and so on. It's an enormous, diverse and fascinating world. What's the goal of any life form? Very simple, survive and breed. A parasite's ideal environment is within a human. Parasites have a mission to destroy the weakest. As a species, we were born in conditions we'd now find terrifying. Do you ever poop in the toilet? Do you know what that, that means, poop? 50% of the dry weight of that stool is living bacteria and viruses. We are teeming with life. We've confused clean with sterile. Um, we've been at such <laughs> war with this microbial world that we believe that killing all the microbes is the key to health. I felt something was wrong, a stirring in my throat. I was going to brush my teeth and go to bed. But as I brushed my teeth, I felt something moving in my mouth. I pressed it with my finger, like this, and pulled out a worm this long. It happened at the end of the 1960s when Nadezhda Simeonova worked as a radiologist at a floating fish plant in Vladivostok. She then worked at meat processing factories developing serious diseases. She blames a wrong way of life that led to her being infested with parasites. She overcame her illnesses and has since been writing books on human ecology and has become known for her active position against parasites. Simeonova agreed to accept two volunteers to her health school to help improve their condition using traditional methods. Being a smoker for 37 years, Yelena considers herself a sick person. She suffers from gastric ulcers, chronic gastritis, arthrosis, varicose veins, increased cholesterol and high blood pressure. I don't like the state of my gastrointestinal tract. It's a kind of chronic disease. I treat my stomach and my joints ache. I go to hospital almost wheelchair bound. But if I start treating my joints, my stomach fails. So try to find a solution. Yelena says she spends too much time in hospitals. Despite that, she undergoes a general medical examination to participate in our experiment. Your pancreas looks damaged. Analysis indicates you are experiencing inflammation. Your thyroid has multiple ganglions, your vessels show signs of atherosclerosis, and you have a deformed gallbladder and a polyp there. For some people, their medical record is their life story. The other participant of our experiment is 88-year-old Ivan. I was being diagnosed with a duodenal ulcer for many years, then about five or six years later with cholecystitis and then pancreatitis too. I was tested and had hepatitis B. In November 2013 I had an ultrasound which showed a liver tumor.
Ivan was able to manage without a liver operation back then. But the problem once again manifested itself. Our examination results require a consultation with an oncologist. However, just like last time, he decided not to rush with going under the knife. Yelena and Ivana moving to Sochi, hoping to improve their health through Nadezhda Simeonova's methods. Yelena believes she'll get rid of the gastric ulcer caused by Helicobacter bacteria, while Ivan hopes to overcome his hepatitis B virus. Simeonova claims it's possible without applying conventional medicine. No. What do you think will happen if instead of cleansing yourself, you keep taking drugs that completely change your blood structure? Simeonova uses traditional medicine methods in her practice, as well as herbal antiparasitic medications, and puts special emphasis on proper nutrition and water, and also various exercise routines. She believes medicine should stop leaning towards surgical operations and pharmacology. I absolutely need to reach 92 and a half years of age. My mother reached that age. Thanks to our immune system, we cope with hordes of dangerous infectious agents. And if we can't manage ourselves, we resort to medicine. But the further pharmacology and medicine develop, the clearer it becomes the number of enemies isn't getting smaller. New diseases are replacing the old ones. Despite that, the last 100 years has seen human life expectancy almost doubled. We're asking doctor of biology, Professor Severinov, why we live longer. That's all thanks to water purification systems, developments in hygiene standards and antibiotics. The bear in the wild lives like for 20 or 25 years. When they are in captivity and when they are well fed and well cured, they live like 50 or 55 years. So probably the same happens to, to us. By cleaning water, by cleaning up our food systems, we have done a lot of good. However, there's a price to be paid for these changes. Contrary to popular belief that it's necessary to fight parasites and helminths in particular, gastroenterologist Joel Weinstock considers many of them not to be parasites at all. He successfully treats his patients by infecting them with certain species. He thinks our life conditions are too clean, which makes our immune system run idly. This leads to many autoimmune diseases. Over the last 50 years or so, there's been an emergence of what we call immunological diseases. They include uh, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, diabetes, certain types of diabetes, uh, multiple sclerosis. And it may be related to our high um, cleanliness states that, have, that we live. If Dr. Weinstock claims cleanliness is the cause of many diseases, I've decided to look for this cleanliness around. I'm at a regular supermarket wearing a pair of white gloves. Let's see what's going to happen to them in 10 minutes' time. Hmm. There are so many bright, pretty and tasty things. That's probably what microbes think when they get inside us. Do you also act like this? Have you ever watched your bags all the way from your local supermarket to your kitchen? Well, you may leave them at the doorstep or put them on the floor. And finally, uh, hi. they hi, they find themselves on the kitchen table, chairs, oh, and in the fridge. What cleanliness are we talking about? One must give credit where credit is due, however. Ten minutes after the experiment with the white gloves in the supermarket, mm. we didn't register any clear evidence of dirt. However, upon returning home, streams of dirty water flowed. As I understand Dr. Weinstock's methods, when he deploys bigger and stronger parasites like worms inside his patients, they allegedly suppress smaller things like bacteria that may cause diseases he mentioned. I've seen blood samples of allergic people full of various life forms. 
Well, we don't normally have um, viruses and bacteria floating around in our blood. Uh, what, the, what the worms do is they promote what we call immunological regulation. Just like everyone else in medicine, Dr. Weinstock supports the concept of blood being sterile. It's the norm, but such blood is rare. This is how hematologists see blood of people after heart attacks who suffer from asthma, diabetes, or just feel sick. The method is unique as the blood is examined right after it's taken from the patient. We can see blood plasma is infected with viruses and now also with fungi. We see intracellular parasitosis and we can also see worm eggs. We see a lot of protozoa, amoebas. People come with clinical blood analysis that doesn't register amoeba, but we can see it with our own eyes. This is an operation to remove an echinococcus from a person's lung, incredibly dangerous and cunning parasite that's almost impossible to get rid of at later stages. It causes cysts to form in the liver, just like the alveolar echinococcus, but the latter can spread to neighboring organs, causing metastases in the lungs, brain, heart and bones. In other words, it's a parasitic cancer. But cancer has many faces and probably many causes. There are many cancer theories, but it's all due to parasites. First, the parasite, trichomonads. It's lived on Earth for millions of years and adapted perfectly, so it's hard to detect. The second parasite, often an accomplice, is called candida. I want to quit everything and leave, especially at night. I can't eat any more porridge. Honey makes me sick. Tea is disgusting. Nadezhda insulted me in front of everyone, shouted I'm a wimp, not a person. Can you imagine if I have allowed her to smoke and turned a blind eye to it? Things would never have worked out. No one will feel sorry for you, remember. You have to stop being like a dirty animal and become a human being. Any living creature spreads around itself a cloud of microbes. If we spend 24 hours in a room, it will change its microcosm drastically. When inviting guests, you add the new rivals to your domestic microbes. The strength of our immune system is tested all the time. Just for the sake of the experiment, we have invited laboratory assistants to a recently cleaned flat. They will take microbe tests from every corner you probably missed. A real nightmare for a housewife. The results were not a surprise. Mold, a Shrikia coli, saprophytes and even pinworm eggs. So cleanliness is a relative concept. Thanks to people, residents of this micro world have even explored space. The amount of dust in space differs from what we have here, where you brush it off and it seems clean enough. But in three days it accumulates on fans, filters and special dust collectors in such quantities that you can make of it a kind of a felt boot. All this makes us clean the space station more thoroughly. Lifestyle changes may lead to the following. We, as a nutrient medium for bacteria, may create new conditions in which a bacterium now showing no signs would receive a huge stock of food and be extremely happy to eat it. We tamed cows and got tuberculosis. Overcrowded cities led to spreading diseases like cholera. We've moved into places with plastic windows, filters and air conditioners. Now we're surrounded by a different microcosm and suffer from new diseases. We have brought pets to our homes, natural parasite carriers. Some studies show that parasites can be the cause of allergies. Among people suffering from asthma and allergy, there is a lot of pet owners. In 100% of cases, newborn puppies are infected with Toxicara. It's from the mother through the placenta. Our parks are packed with Toxicara eggs. Our children walk on Toxicara eggs. There are millions of them. One gram of feces may contain 15,000 eggs, but not everyone gets infected. The eggs must ripen. 
Our participant Yelena faces a hard choice. She has a cat at home in Moscow. She's been told if a person doesn't change his or her habitat, then the old diseases return. All sorts of animals, cats, dogs, birds, have under their skin and hair a worm production factory. Why are they nice to people? To pass on uninvited parasites. House pets must be cured, all of them. Cats are a source of toxoplasma. Well, you can't just get toxoplasma solely from cats. You can get it from raw meat, especially lamb, or fresh milk from dirty greens a cat walked on. Toxoplasma, toxoplasma lives in our tissues, including the brain. Yekaterina is working on a research project dedicated to toxoplasma. Scientists suppose that these organisms may provoke schizophrenia. Besides, by taking toxoplasma as an example, many scientists examined a mechanism where a parasite can affect the behavior of its host. For example, a mouse infected with toxoplasma won't run away from a cat. There are theories that a parasite controls its host. It wants the host to be caught by a cat. According to some data, those affected with toxoplasma either lose the instinct of self-preservation or their reaction slows down. People sent to hospital after accidents had blood tests for chemical and other analyses. I also examined the blood to see if it contained toxoplasma. The results showed a big percentage of people were infected. We all know about benefits of soap and other disinfectants, but can they protect us from bacteria? Opinions are divided. David Whitlock, an American scientist and chemist, hasn't washed for 12 years, as he believes the soap removes the natural protection from his body, beneficial bacteria. According to his theory, millions of organisms living on our skin are necessary to keep it healthy while personal hygiene products kill them. I have not taken a shower or a bath or, you know, submerged myself in water for more than 12 years. Jasmina, you're sitting right next to David. Does he smell? No, he doesn't. And that's what a lot of people are surprised by, right? 15 years ago or so, I was dating a woman and she asked me why her horse, you know, rolled in the dirt in March. And, you know, eventually I realized, well, it was to get the right kind of bacteria. We, you know, isolated them from, you know, from the soil and applied them to me. And, you know, they persisted on me for some period of time and, you know, then grew them up in the laboratory. This bacteria we're starting to learn is a, is a peacekeeper or a keystone species within the skin and that their lack of can lead to things as benign as sensitive skin, staph infection or MRSA. Most bacteria live inside us, not outside, and no hygiene will get rid of them. Many of the bacteria have kind of protective functions. But does that mean we should all just stop washing? All animals wash. It's an evolution-approved way to get rid of parasites. If I get dirty, I do wash. I mean, I do wash my hands before food preparation and after, you know, using the facilities. Um, but then I reapply ammonia oxidizing bacteria to them. It's not about not showering because water alone is not bad for us. It's all of the other products that we've introduced at such phenomenal rates. Water is our natural aid to fight for cleanliness and against parasites. Our main defender, though, is liver, which produces bile. It's a complicated liquid consisting of multiple components. It's used during the digestion process, neutralizes poisons and destroys unwelcome guests. As a result of the lack of water, less bile is produced, so the protection becomes weaker. Not a single living creature on Earth can exist without water. But many of us, for some reason, don't even know how much of it or what kind of water we're supposed to drink. Or even if we do know, we just ignore it. Scientists believe that depending on a person's age, weight and height, they should consume at least two litres of water a day. We obviously pay a lot of attention to the water on board space station because we have to store it for a long time. We have to maintain its cleanliness. Uh, we uh, have preventative measures so that we don't, for example, have bacteria grown in the, in the water, especially the drinking water. Apart from water and cleanliness, 
Food is another important factor that makes an impact on our micro world. Imagine these are our insides. Sometimes even one meal can make our stomach go haywire. We often don't think about the right choice of food and eat and drink whatever we like and as much as we like. So if we do it on a regular basis, mixing everything up, sorry, by the age of 50 or so, we'll feel like people with serious disabilities. Years of wrong eating habits lead to certain amounts of undigested food in our intestines where parasites can easily breed. If you feel bad after eating, you remember what doesn't work together. This table is demonstrating the idea of the hay diet, the logic behind separating products by their chemical composition. We'll put vegetable and animal proteins here, Let's put carbohydrates here, carbs like honey, potato, grain, and these are vegetable products that you can combine either with proteins or with carbohydrates. We can eat proteins without mixing them with carbohydrates during a meal. So, if we need proteins, we eat them with vegetables, drink tomato juice in one meal. And in two hours, if we want something sweet, we can eat sweet porridge, baked apples or vegetarian potato soup, fruit pies, bread. If we eat meat this way, with greens and vegetables, at most, digestion time is 40 minutes. We feel great and can walk freely. After I started eating properly, separating products, proteins from carbohydrates, my ulcer stopped bothering me. You could say I almost forgot about it. At Simeonovas, our participants eat proteins and carbohydrates separately. But for Yelena, things don't run as smoothly as she hoped. Changes in the environment and weather and quitting smoking caused a new seizure. And the food we're given here Rough things, like vegetables and fruit, don't let me feel better. <laughs> Meanwhile, astronauts' nutrition is based on a different principle. Overloads, stress and consequences of weightlessness require a special diet. They make up a menu according to their taste, and specialists make sure it's balanced. It should have a certain amount of proteins, fats and carbohydrates. Energy, about 3,000 calories a day. In the next 16 days, products on the menu shouldn't repeat. Back on Earth, the system's not so structured. Dietitians create a daily menu for us, so that in a stressful situation, a person gets the maximum nutrition. So, uh, vegetarians probably couldn't cope there. Also, the, the food is important because there's a, it's important for the crew cohesiveness, you know, uh, the emotional state of everybody in, in the, just like families on Earth or friends on Earth like to gather together for a meal, we do the same thing on board station. Gradually, two weeks in Sochi have come to an end, and soon our heroes will return home. I so much want to pack and leave, but I've just thought about the fact that I'm leaving a school called Hope with hope. Being healthy when you're old is my dream, <laughs> especially after being sick for 40 years and then becoming healthy. Can you imagine? No, you have to be sick for 40 years to understand. We're back in Moscow. Yelena goes to the medical center again to finish our experiment. After the program in Sochi, I have perforated ulcer, not even gastritis. You smoked for a long time. That's the main reason. A chronic ulcer can flare up at any moment. 
Biochemical analysis shows all indications are within the norm. There are slight lipid changes, but if you say your cholesterol used to be much higher, the dynamic is now positive because it's heading towards the norm. Leukocyte level is normal, no coccus fluoride detected, it's all gone. Four months have passed since Sochi and we just have to visit Helena to find out about her health. It's spring outside. Spring's outside, I have a desire to live. I want to live a full life, discover new things. My main achievement is not smoking for almost four months. My body is working in a very different way. So many years of nicotine dependence, and now it's gone. All the vessels and organs are cleansing. Has your body breathed in? It has, it has. Spread its wings. <laughs> Not everything ran smoothly for optimist Ivan either after returning from Sochi, but he didn't give up. Quite some time has passed since then, he's no longer diagnosed with a liver tumour and hepatitis tests are back to normal again. Even a minor problem of nail fungus he was suffering from for 30 years has gone. It turned out the problem was inside. Why we live at all is really surprising. It's because species who couldn't fight or find ways to coexist with bacteria, which are everywhere, simply died out, leaving no descendants. And we, the people living now, descend from survivors. Now our task is to survive on our own, and the invisible microworld plays a crucial role here. We should eat and drink healthily, have enough physical activity and never give up. So microorganisms don't think we are a compost heap they need to process, and then we'll be a hard nut to crack.